Hey buddy, it's Joel Toppin here, and I'm taking a look inside the box of Legion War Games' newest two designs, uh, Little Bighorn and Rosebud Creek. We just looked at Rosebud Creek video here just a few minutes ago. We opened that one up and went through it. And so I've removed the shrink wrap here from Little Bighorn, and we're going to take a look inside the box. Now if you haven't seen the earlier video, these are, um, these are thin boxes. Uh, from Legion War Games, but they make a very good product. Their games have been uh, pretty good so far. I haven't really played a game of theirs that I, you know, thought was a bad game. So um, I'm really curious to see what's inside the, the box of this one. I have, if you follow me on Twitter, I have been, uh, I have been playing the first game in this series, Adobe Walls, which is one of the largest battles in uh, between uh, native people. And the U.S. Army, Kit Carson was leading about five companies of New Mexico Cavalry, Volunteer Cavalry, and uh, California Cavalry. And uh, yeah, they happened upon a very large uh, assembly of Comanche and Kiowa. And it was very, very similar to Little Bighorn. Uh, the difference being was that uh, Kit Carson had two mountain howitzers and uh, kept his wits about him. was very cool under, the, under intense pressure. And so uh, was able to extricate his command. Whereas Custer, as you know, things didn't work out as well for him. So here we go. Let's look inside the box. Again, the cover art for both of these. It's thematic. It's nice. I like it. Here we have uh, an advertisement for Legion War Games, their website, and so forth. They do a really good job of supporting their product. We have dice and baggies. How many of little publishers, small, I mean, Legion's a small publisher. How many small publishers really, I mean, they give you baggies. That's, that's cool. The boxes are thin. You can't really put a counter tray in here, but to be honest, you don't really need one. I think for these games, because you really can fit all the counters into those baggies. All right, so the rule book for this one is thicker than for Rosebud. Now, um, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, maybe there's more historic info in it or something. I don't know. Rosebud's uh, rule book was only like 20 pages long. This one is 32, which feels more like Adobe Walls' rule book. And um, again, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly why that is. But uh, oh, I see there's multiple scenarios here. Okay, so the core rules, I think, are about 20 pages, and then you have special rules and things like that. So, uh, it, it is illustrated, it's black and white, all of Legion's war, uh, war game manuals are pretty much like this. Not heavily illustrated, but they are in a large font, which makes them very readable. Um, you know, if you break out some of those old Avalon Hill games, I think they're using like a six point font or something. These, uh, these have a nice uh, large font to them, and so it's very readable. And it's not a difficult game system at all. I, I wouldn't call it simple, but I definitely wouldn't call it, you know, complex. So it's a nice medium weight war game. Okay, again, these are not the easy punch counters that uh, Legion was doing these for a long time. They were like in shrink wrap, and when you open the shrink wrap, they, they literally just fall off the trees for you. Um, these are maybe more stout. They are nice and thick. I, I really should have mentioned this in uh, the Rosebud uh, video, but these are nice and thick. They're brown core. Um, if you have played any of Revolution uh, games, is uh, war games, it, the the die cutting looks very similar to what Revolution has been doing. So these are nice thick counters. You got a half sheet of markers, and then you have wow, two counter sheets, a great host. Of native warriors. I'll point out some things I didn't point out in the uh, Rosebud video uh, regarding the native warriors uh, and that is that when they uh, dismount, flip it over here, when they dismount they do not decrease in strength and that is because they have uh, pony holders which are like young boys, uh, teenager younger who uh, will hold the mounts so that they don't have to actually leave warriors behind like the cavalry does. And then see here you got the village, uh, you have village civilians, women and children here, which was a target of Custer in this battle. So it looks like the designer has done his homework here. Um, 
So here you have the Ungbapa Sioux, Oglala Sioux, Santi Sioux, Brule Sioux, a Yankton Sioux, Minikanju, a Sanark, and the and some Cheyenne. It was kind of cool. Rosebud, there's uh there's some Blackfeet warriors in there. Alright. The ability to set grass fires is in here. So this is this is the biggest one of the series so far. Um, pretty impressive. A lot more personalities in here. With Adobe Walls, you just have uh, Kit Carson, um, three different Comanche, uh, or two Comanche, and uh, excuse me, one Comanche and two Kiowa uh, chiefs in Adobe Walls, and then Custer. This one you have looks like all the main characters. So here you have all the U.S. Cavalry. Now when Cavalry dismount, they go down in strength because they have to leave someone behind to hold the mounts. It looks like they got that right in this one. In Rosebud, there are some stickers uh, because of uh, misprinted strength on the on the U.S. Cavalry. It's nice that that didn't happen here. This, this, is, this is good. This looks really, really good. Like it. Uh, let's see, do we have some optional Gatling guns here? Looks like we do, Gatling crew. Great, uh, what of, what might have been's is what if Custer had his Gatling guns with him. So there you are. I didn't show it in the Rosebud video, but all of these, there are native scouts too. Um, in... The Rosebud, you have Crow Scouts primarily. I think it was Crow, and there's one other uh, type. In, in uh, Adobe Walls, you have Ute and Hickory Apache Scouts. Oh, uh, that's cool. Oh, I'm liking this. All right. So this one's got two maps for it. Again, this is a game with a lot of maneuver. Maneuver is a big part of this. So we're going to look at the maps at the end, kind of like what I did with with Adobe, with, uh, excuse me, Rosebud, show you the charts here, it's the same as, same as pretty much what you had with, with Rosebud, you have terrain effects, it's one-sided, it's cardstock, here you have the explanation of the counters, again, it's cardstock, it shows you all the different, uh, war shields, how that is associated by, uh, by the different war bands, so, master sequence of play is there, again, one-sided, Two different kinds of combat. You have fire combat. Here's the chart for it. It's real easy. And then you have melee chart. And then you have howitzer and gatling gun chart, which I don't think we had with Rosebud because I don't think that equipment was there. Uh, you do have this in Adobe Walls for howitzer, but gatling guns are new. So here you go. Howitzer and gatling gun uh, fire charts. Shows you your field of fire. That the only thing, the only time facing is important is when it comes to um, uh, to howitzers and gatling guns. So, again, one sided. All of these are pretty much one sided. Then you have an ammunition roster. If you want to use optional rules to track the ammunition expenditure of the U.S. units, you can do so by photocopying this and checking off boxes. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is another system, a more abstract system in the game to handle that. we got more fun here. We have a turn track, which is separate. So you, this is going to require more table space than any of the other games because you got two maps and you have this game uh, turn record track from the 25th to the 27th. We have off-map holding boxes for the US and for the native people. Stuck to the bottom of the box here. There we are. And that's something new too. I don't really know what that's about, but uh, let's go ahead and unfold the map, the maps, excuse me, and uh, see what those are all about. Okay, I have unfolded both maps. Uh, as I've said, uh, there's not a lot of um, there's not a whole lot of counters in the game as far as like actual combat units. A lot of maneuver in the game, as you would expect for a game on the, the American West. And uh, so here is the far right-hand side of the map, the far I guess you could call it southeast side of the map. 
following the course of the Little Bighorn. The map has uh, got the same style of artwork as uh, the Rosebud did, which is nice. I think it's better, uh, a better style than Adobe Walls had. So there you go. Two maps, they are going to join together on the long end, so you're gonna need a uh, good six feet of table space uh, in order to play uh, the larger, whatever the larger scenarios are in this. And uh, this is a difficult battle to model, but I think the system's gonna work for it. I've been, like I said, I've been playing Adobe Walls and that's another system, uh, another situation very similar to Little Bighorn where a small cavalry force uh, bites off more than it can chew and ends up in a, in a bit of a jam. But and that's that is a difficult thing to model in the, in terms of a of a war game, but uh, I think this system is going to work for it. So really excited about taking this uh, on the table. As many of you know, I do live in Montana now, so this uh, this battle site is on the uh, it's on the agenda. I want to I want to visit both these sites. I'll be sure to take uh, take my games with me and get some good photographs when I get out there. Hopefully, uh, this spring we'll be able to visit the sight a little big horn so there you are um new system it, it really i don't see a whole lot of a lot of action on the adobe walls um game but hopefully this will generate some interest for uh for the system uh, battles of the american west by legion war games and uh, this is little big horn and i'm joel toppin and that's what uh, comes inside the box